Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Fiddle, along with special guest Miss Frankie. Today I will be showing you how I made the dragon wings, painted the eyes, and put the skin on. Now the cool part is that these wings are pretty universal, so if you wanted to make yourself a big old pair of dragonfly wings, you could absolutely do that with this method. And the cool part is most of the stuff came from the Dollar Tree. Link to materials will be in the description box below. I am working on his skin pattern details. None of that is finalized yet except for his eyes and eyelids. I think I will probably have him done by the middle of next week. I think he really does look like he walked out of a Tim Burton movie. <laughs> Okay, so you know how us crafters hold on to weird things just because we think it might be useful later? I had been saving a couple pomegranate juice bottles just to make eyes out of them. Originally I wanted to make a dragon puppet, and I'll get there someday, but for the time being, they work perfectly for this. I managed to have enough clear area on my bottles that I was able to get a full eye shape for both of them with just a little bit of lettering showing and I used a knife to scrape all that off. After getting the eye shape that I wanted, I scratched up the inside of the lens with sandpaper to make sure that gave a surface that the paint could stick to. Next I took a piece of brown tape and drew the pattern that I wanted to use for the pupil. Put the piece of tape on the outside of the eye and traced it on the inside. Using that same stencil piece of tape, I did the same process to the other eye. I did try to use black paint and a paintbrush at first to do the black and it didn't work out so well. So using the pen turned out better, I had more control. For the colors, I started with a dark green, then worked my way out to a light green. After laying all the colors out, I used the paintbrush and started from the center and swept outwards to the edge to give it the lines that are in eyes. While they were drying, I was trying to figure out the best way to make them more opaque without really messing up what I already put there. At first I thought I might try a black marker, but then I looked over and remembered that I got this chalk marker thing from Dollar Tree that kind of reminds me of a paint crayon. They turned out better than I expected. Okay, let's move on to the wings. First, draw your pattern out on paper, and then enlarge it to cardboard. Your best bet will be to cut it out and lay it on a darker surface, so that way you can see what you're doing when we get to the next steps. I taped mine to a yoga mat and it worked great. Next, stretch and tape cellophane over top of your pattern. Grab your spray adhesive, take it outside, and spray a very thin layer down. You don't want to make it too thick because you want the plastic to shine through the mesh. You may need an extra set of hands for this part. Stretch out the mesh spooky fabric stuff that you can find everywhere right now and lay it over top of your pattern. It's a way to get a lot of detail in a fast and easy way. When the light shines through it, it really does look like a dragonfly wing. If you wanted to dye the fabric black beforehand, that would be cool too, but I wanted to keep my colors light. Now for the next part, I can think of what two ways to do this, and I only tried one way, so I do not know how the other way would turn out. And I think it's good to mention it because I think that if I would have done it the other way, my results would have been better. I will let you decide on which way you would like to try it. And if you do try it, let me know in the comments how it goes. The way I did it, I used the spray adhesive and coated the wings again and then went through with my twine and followed my veining lines. Now, when there was a split in the vein, I would split my twine into how many ever splits there is in the vein and use the individual strands along those lines. I did that so I wouldn't have new lines or breaks so it's continuous at least for as long as I could, and if where I did add in, I tried to hide it up underneath the edge so it kind of looked like it was still a part of the original strands. And that also helps make the veins look more realistic with the thickness from where they start to where your individual strands branch out at the ends. The second idea or second method is just for this part alone, and that would be using watered down glue to glue down the big veins. You would still have to use spray adhesive to lay down the white mesh fabric, but for the veining, 
I think that using watered down glue is a better way to go because the more layers you add of the spray adhesive, it takes the shininess of the cellophane away. And because I was already through the process, I didn't get to try that out. But I think that in the end it would help as long as you kept the mix light. Like you didn't soak the string in it, you just like barely dipped it in it. Or maybe even use a paintbrush along the twine itself and then lay it down so you're not getting puddles. You will have to add the white mesh fabric to both sides of the saran wrap. And then you'll have to do the veining on both sides as well. And because you are adding so many layers, eventually it gets to the point where you really can't see where the veins are. My solution for this was using my light table. I did also use my window. My light gets a little warm after a while, so I can't use it for very long, but it worked when it worked. <laughs> for the next part, we're going into the art program. In order to make your wireframe, you're going to need to start out with about a foot and a half of extra wire at both the beginning and end of each piece. Lay your wings in the orientation that you want them on the floor. Then starting about a foot and a half away from the end of the wire, trace the wings in a continuous line, going from one wing to the next. Then leave a foot and a half excess at the other end. And you'll want to do that twice for each set of wings. I know it's a lot, but it will definitely add more structure. And especially if this is something you're going to be wearing, you're going to want that stability. To help yourself in the future, when you are making your wire frame, add a piece of tape to where your wing starts and stops. Don't tape the pieces together just on the individual strand itself, especially for the spacing um, on the back. For this next part, make sure that you have ample room and there's nothing around you in the way. That includes animals, but as you can see, mine don't listen very well. Use your twine and wrap it around the area that's supposed to go around the wing, in between your tape marks. Do this for all four strands. This isn't the greatest shot, but once you have your wire wrapped, you now need to attach it to the wings, one piece on each side. For that, I used a curved upholstery needle. I don't know what the proper term is, but I like wrap stitched it all the way around the wings. And I put the stitches about a quarter of an inch apart, or at least I tried to.
Next, we need to connect our wings together. Wrap them with one piece of wire all the way around the center, connecting them together. Then wrap them with twine. I did mine differently because I needed to attach mine to my dragon, not to a plate or some other apparatus. Which, unfortunately, I can't show you how to do because I didn't make these to wear. When I originally had the idea to use the mesh woven Halloween stuff, I didn't think they would turn out the way that they did, but I'm glad they did. From this angle, he plays a pretty good dead bug. <laughs> Next, I am going to show you how I gave him his skin, which was by sewing on burlap strips until I had his body completely covered. I will say that grippy work glove worked really well. I could not get that needle to pull through. It would have been a better idea to use wax cord, but it was a little more expensive. And last but not least, I sewed his eyes on, again using that same upholstery needle. I poked six holes, three on each corner of the eyes, and sewn them through, making sure that inside of his head I was looping it around wire so they stayed in place. If you've made it this far, thank you. If you're new, welcome. Hopefully we'll learn something from each other. And as always, thank you, Ginger, and I'll see you next time.